If you want to practice all of the new PTE questions using artificial intelligence on an online portal that has a similar marking to your real PTE exam, head over to masterpte.com.au to create a free account. Here, you can practice all four sections separately and receive instant feedback for all of your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. You can also view and compare your answers with others who have already succeeded in achieving a high score. Download 9090 Bands template for speaking, writing, and listening. Take mock test, receive instant result, overall feedback, and in-depth analysis which helps you pinpoint exactly where you lose points. MasterPTE.com.au the best PTE practice software in the world. A lot of us are not aware of the extraordinary successes of the Millennium Development Goals, several of which have achieved their targets long before the due date. That proves that this species of humanity is capable of achieving extraordinary progress if it really acts together and it really tries hard. But if I had to put it in a nutshell these days, I sort of feel that globalization has taken us by surprise, and we've been slow to respond to it. If you look at the downside of globalization, it really does seem to be sometimes overwhelming. All of the grand challenges that we face today, like climate change and human rights and demographics and terrorism and pandemics and human slavery and species loss, I could go on. We're not making an awful lot of progress against an awful lot of those challenges. So in a nutshell, that's the challenge that we all face today at this interesting point in history. That's clearly what we've got to do next. We've somehow got to get our act together and we've got to figure out how to globalize the solutions better so that we don't simply become a species which is the victim of the globalization of problems.
Welcome to Stanford University Business School. Today, I would like to talk about management and leadership. It is very important that you realize the importance of management and leadership in this university. It is obvious that the purpose of this education to learn management and leadership skills. But you have to remember, this education of management should not be only be about delivering services and making sure the good quality. However, you should realize, it is responsibility of a student to accomplish assignment by themselves instead of depending on others. Students should be responsible for the management performance and identify how it could happen appropriately. The responsibility means that the accomplishments achieved by others does not necessarily indicate what they are truly capable of. Hello everyone, welcome to my class. Today, I will discuss the schools on the general condition of how animals survive and reproduce. This is very interesting because an animal survives and reproduce mainly involves factors which include temperature tolerance, body size, behavior, and the altitude they live in. Here is an example, imagine animals that can survive only in hot environment. Now if these same animals are put into a freeze, you will notice it will die very soon. Those species who have tolerance temperature to code can only survive. This is why climate and seasons are quite important for animals' survival. Various species have to maintain their body in, on the water, and tolerate different temperature in various seasons. Finally, I would like to point out that some of these species or animals can adapt to climate change by changing their behavior in daily activity in the habitat they live in.
sea creatures are inspiring the latest devices that harness wave power. This one, called the oyster, sits on the ocean floor and opens and closes as waves pass over it. Cables attach it to generators on the shore. Since November 2009, it's been powering 9,000 homes in the Orkney Islands. Another device looks like a snake. The anaconda is made from a rubber tube filled with water that floats just below the surface. When a swell hits the front of it, the tube is squeezed. A bulge ripples down its length and powers a turbine in its tail. Prototypes are currently being tested, but the full-scale version will be 200 metres long. This system also looks like a snake, but this one is made of steel. It floats near the surface, where waves make its joints move. This drives hydraulic systems that power electrical generators. Like the anaconda, it's still being tested. Results will prove if these devices are up to the job of supplying viable sources of green energy. Today we will talk about one aspect of global problems, this is water purification. We have been studying in fears how to deal with water pollution and yet today we still face the challenges of how we can purify water. There is an organization called CBAM Foundation that is working on this problem and focusing on human health. Unlike the underdeveloped countries, the developed countries are fortunate and have access to bottled water. They have also water access through the tap. But pure water is still a global problem and we need to solve this as quickly as possible. One solution came by about this is to introduce nanotechnology and both countries that have all have not sufficient water resource nanotechnology will be used to find corresponding solutions and we can expect the problem can be solved very soon.
Today we will discuss the two main origins of the concept of political ideology. These are the terms left and right appeared during the French Revolution of the 18th century, when members of the National Assembly divided into supporters of the kings of the president's wife and supporters of the revolution to his left. However, the left and right wing became conceptualized since the French Revolution, the left side of the speaker podium and the assembly became the political left wing. This left wing is aggressive in nature. On the other hand, the right side of the speaker podium became conservative, which is the part of the old regime. Let's talk about visualizing life without fossil fuels. We have an addiction to fossil fuels and it's not sustainable when I say we. I'm talking about the so-called developed world. The developed world gets 80 or 90 percent of all its energy from fossil fuels and living on fossil fuels for energy. In this way, it's not sustainable for three fairly obvious reasons. First, on the left easily accessible fossil fuels are a finite resource and so some point that resource will be exploited and humanity will have to do something else. Second, setting fire to fossil fuels puts carbon dioxide upstairs. So we have the climate motivation, the clear consensus of the climate science community is with substantial aerobats still on exactly what might happen their advice is. This is a geoengineering experiment that was well advised to stop as soon as possible. And third, even if you don't believe in climate change and even if global fossil fuels aren't running out, today it might be the case that your fossil fuels or our fossil fuels in a particular country or state have run out and you might depend on other countries or states for fossil fuels in the future. So you have a security of supply motivation for saying let's look into really getting off fossil fuels in a serious way. I find all three of these motivations are equally compelling and I'm just going to take it as given now that we are interested in discussing life after fossil fuels.
Reality is that civil society, journalists, and activists are coming under attack from extremists, groups on the one hand, and in many countries also from their own governments. We're seeing bloggers and journalists being jailed, charged, and intimidated by their own governments, many of which are allies with the West in the war on terror. Just three examples. A friend and former colleague of mine, Hishan Amarat, has been charged with threatening state security along with six other activists in Morocco. The Saudi blogger Rafe Badawi has been jailed and flogged for insulting Islam and criticizing the Saudi regime on his blog. More recently, the Turkish representative for Reporters Without Borders, Errol Undurolu, has been detained and charged with spreading terrorist propaganda because he and some other activists have been supporting Kurdish media. Anti-terror measures quickly turn into state repression without strong protection for minority communities and for peaceful debate. This needs to be supported by a robust, independent local media. Kayla was voted Toy of the Year in countries around the world. She connects to the internet and uses speech recognition technology to answer your child's questions, respond just like a friend. But the power doesn't lie with your child's imagination. It actually lies with the company harvesting masses of personal information while your family is innocently chatting away in the safety of their home. A dangerously false sense of security this case sounded alarm bells for me, as it is my job to protect consumers' rights in my country. And with billions of devices such as cars, energy meters, and even vacuum cleaners expected to come online by 2020, we thought this was a case worth investigating further. Because what was Kayla doing with all the interesting things she was learning? Did she have another friend she was loyal to and shared her information with? Yes, you guessed right, she did. In order to play with Kayla, you need to download an app to access all her features. Parents must consent to the terms being changed 
without notice. The recordings of the child, her friends and family can be used for targeted advertising. And all this information can be shared with unnamed third parties. And these photoreceptors in your eye are an extraordinary piece of engineering. Do you know how sensitive a photoreceptor can be? What's the absolutely minimum possible detectable unit of light? One photon. Turns out your photoreceptors can, under appropriate circumstances, de detect a single photon. Not in the bright light, but in dark adapted conditions you actually have one photon sensitivity. Very impressive. Under appropriate conditions, mind you. Sound receptors. You've got sound receptors in your ear. And they're beautiful. We're not going to talk about them at any length. But there's these little flappy, these, these little um, uh, spiky things going along in your ear, and they can translate vibrational energy coming from your ear, you're hitting your eardrum, being translated into a vibration in the fluid in your ear, into a physical motion of, of these uh, little receptors there, into an electrical motion, into an electrical signal that goes into your ear. So all of that, all that's pretty impressive stuff. We're not going to talk about the details of it, but I invite some of you who want to learn more about this, uh, particularly you know, MIT students, I think, find receptors to be really quite remarkable kinds of devices.
you want to practice all of the new PTE questions using artificial intelligence on an online portal that has a similar marking to your real PTE exam, head over to masterpte.com.au to create a free account. Here, you can practice all four sections separately and receive instant feedback for all of your speaking, writing, reading, and listening. You can also view and compare your answers with others who have already succeeded in achieving a high score. Download 9090 Bands template for speaking, writing, and listening. Take mock test, receive instant result, overall feedback, and in-depth analysis which helps you pinpoint exactly where you lose points. MasterPTE.com.au the best PTE practice software in the world.